All right, there was some time that went between figuring out what was wrong with this thing and um, getting the parts in. I've already ordered a complete <clears throat> update kit. So what I did after I figured out, took a look and found that dummy plug was bad. I went ahead and put the valve covers back on. Less dirt you can get in these things, the better off you're going to be. That dirt actually ends up... Some of it's going to get caught by the oil filter. But any that gets past it or doesn't quite make it to that before it gets sucked up into the high pressure pump, which is right here. Well, that dirt is going to end up in the IPR valve screen. actually got the updated screen on it some of them oh here we are some of them don't have that reinforcement in the center of it here but if you look let me see if I can zoom in on it somewhat there's a few little pieces of contaminant that are on that screen I bought this truck used I don't know its history you know, I did the Carfax thing. They never mentioned any major problems with it. But, um, basically, I don't know, it's an 06. Maybe it come with a better screen. I did notice it had the updated feed line already on the turbo. So that's a part I bought for the, that's in the kit. That's nice. But the dummy plugs were the old style. They tell the difference because a 10 millimeter hex socket fits it. So, anyway, while I'm waiting on parts to come in, I figured I would have a look at this screen and see if there are any holes in it. And I don't see any holes. This is good news. Yeah, my problem was. Pretty much going to be that dummy plug we found yesterday, the other day. Anyway, the, while we're waiting on parts, we can get all this gunk cleaned up here that's in the valley. Like I say, you don't want any of that to end up in the engine and end up in this screen. The kit came with new O-ring and a new screen which I will probably use. Let me give that some thought. might want to keep that. In case I have to clean it later if I knock anything in there. Despite all my efforts not to. But, uh, that's what we're going to do today before work is try to get this valley cleaned up. And, uh, Maybe get some of these bolts out of out of this cover. It's going to be a time-consuming proposition for some of them. Some of them look like they're pretty easy. The cover removal didn't go as smoothly as it would have liked it to have. Uh, there's a tab on the passenger side of that cover. It uh, was hanging up on the EGR cooler flange. Now I'd seen in other videos where they said you could grind that off, make it easier to remove. So I didn't really originally want to do it that way. I tried prying and pulling, but I was afraid I was going to end up breaking something. So I ended up putting the cover back down. Uh, Knocked it back in place with a rubber mallet and went ahead and took a die grinder and ground that tab down so I could get that out of there. 
uh, once I got it most of the way through I grabbed a, what was left of it with a pair of slip joint pliers broke it off then I could finally get it out of there So we employed some very dirty tricks around that tab wall right here so that it'll clear this EGR cooler. Anyway, it should come out of there now. bolts in the engine. That's a good thing. Well, with the cover out of the way, I can finally get to the bolts, pull those out so I can get the high pressure oil pump out. Being very careful not to drop any tools or any bolts down inside the engine. With the pump out of the truck and on the work table, I can go ahead and get the uh, snap to connect fitting off of the pump there. It's a multi-piece design that tends to leak or even blow apart causing catastrophic engine failure later. So it's best to get rid of that while the engine's apart. The new piece is a one-piece design. It's much stronger, much more reliable. The kit came with this little tool here, put it on there to uh, line up the fitting, make sure it's both straight and uh, adjusted to the right length so it can go in the truck without a problem. It also included a new plug for the uh, pressure test port so I went ahead and installed that. It had a new o-ring on it. Thought it would be a good idea to have a fresh seal. Although I didn't manage to capture it on video I also replaced that seal there that goes around the pump housing. It seals the housing to the cover. Um, I also used a pick to remove the o-rings from the engine and the branch tube replace them with the new ones in the kit and before installing the pump I cleaned up the mating surface there for the gasket on the cover making sure that I pushed away from the opening any debris that I might have encountered you don't want to get any junk in this engine. It'll end up in the IPR screen. Cause problems with stalling or no starts or who knows what. Before reinstalling the cover, you have to put some more silicone right there in that seam where the scraper was working right there. Where the uh, rear cover of the engine means with the block. A little dab of silicone on each side.
After wiping everything down real nice and clean, I remembered I needed to blow out the bolt holes so I didn't end up with a false torque indication because oil inside these holes was hydraulic. It makes the bolt seem like it was tight, but it wouldn't be. So I blew all those out and then I got to wipe it all down once again. I took an angle grinder and cleaned up all the gnarly metal that was left of the tab for the heat shield. Then I cleaned the cover with some carburetor cleaner and shop towels, rinsed it off with water, blew it dry, and added a new seal and reinstalled the cover on top of the engine. 